So I'm going to move really quick since I'm the last person here. Um, and, I, and I take my title a little bit to shared infrastructure impacts on the scale of human polities. And I'm going to talk a little bit about spatial ecology here. And I think there are some really interesting connections with the talks that have, that have gone on today. Uh, at the outset, I want to, I put myself on this and I put uh, Lux and, and Gideon Mon, who is a, a student here at USU, that's because they did a, a lot of the work collecting the actual empirical data. Uh, so I want to give them definite credit for what they've done there, though all of the ideas here are exploratory and they're mine. And so to the extent that they are um, in rough form, that is in, in no way a reflection of Lux or Gideon. It is only a reflection of, of myself. So uh, I'm going to talk about the, share, uh, the impacts of what I would call shared infrastructure. These are things like roads, bridges, uh, monuments, things uh, in which not any one individual owns uh, by themselves, but is actually shared by society as a whole. And the way that this should affect uh, our spatial ecology or the spatial ecology of uh, human polities. So the motivation comes for this uh, comes from the infrastructure report card of the American Society of Civil Engineers. And in that report card, basically they lament that American public infrastructure, this kind of shared infrastructure I was just talking about, is in a really bad state. And they argue for immediate investment in the upgrade of this shared infrastructure. And they have been arguing that for at least two decades and uh, the governance system of the United States fails to take it seriously, fails to uh, upgrade that infrastructure. Why that failure occurs is a separate question from what I'm going to ask here, though I think it has a lot to do with what Mauricio talked about moving into the competition phase uh, of a system, uh, especially a, a one that displays a cooperation and competitive phase in kind of an, an, an Ali effect in that competition phase. There is a lot, there is an incentive for everyone to use that existing infrastructure to get as much uh, extract as much resources as they can uh, without investing in the upgrade because you are in a competitive phase. But we'll leave that for another time. Uh, the question I want to ask here is, does the positive multiplier effect of shared public infrastructure proposed by the American Society of Civil Engineers affect the spatial ecology of human polities past and present? Is it a general evolutionary law that um, shared public infrastructure has an effect on the ecology, especially the spatial ecology of human polities that the uh, American Society of Civil Engineers says that it does. And the, and the thing that they, this positive multiplier effect is the idea that if we increase uh, our investment in shared infrastructure and build it out, not only does that make uh, resources more available for people, but there's a positive multiplier effect with population as long as that infrastructure is not decaying, then the more people who use it, the more productive the system can get. The classic example of this is a road system. You build a nice road system. If a few people are using it, it does decrease transportation costs. It does make things more productive, society more productive. Uh, the availability of resources uh, is, is uh, easier or, or cheaper for people uh, to gather. But as more people use the road, again, as long as the road doesn't decay, those transportation networks actually become more productive because you get things like gas stations and mechanic shops and uh, hotels and all of these things that actually make the use of the road and long distance transport even more uh, effective than it was if there was just a road there and you could drive on it. But if, you know, inevitably trucks and things break down or horses break down, if you want to take it to a, uh, an ancient context, so if, as you start to get more people using it, there's more incentive to develop markets. For instance, in an ancient context, there would be way station for horses where you could swap out horses. And so now you actually have a multiplier effect. And that's one of the big things that uh, on the positive side, if infrastructure is not decaying, really adds to economic growth, adds to the vibrance of society. But if the infrastructure decays, it can go the other way really fast. Uh, at least that's the argument of the American Society of Civil Engineers, where that infrastructure breaks down, you lose that multiplier effect, and now you can get a real collapse uh, of the system. Uh, and so if this is in fact the case, we should be able to pick it up 
in the territorial ecology or spatial ecology of human polities on a really regular basis, whether we're talking about past societies or present societies. And the reason we use uh, territory size is because it's often a reflection of energy use or um, uh, the scale is, is a reflection uh, potentially of, of energy use of a society. And so I, I've developed a um, pretty detailed model based on production models and scaling theory uh, in territorial ecology or spatial ecology. I'm not going to go through all of that here just because uh, of the time constraint, but I'm going to get down, get to the basic equation or regression equation that we can analyze in which the log of territory size is a function of infrastructure development. This is the independent effect right here of infrastructure uh, that I talked about. And so in infrastructure development scales uh, space use per person. And then if you, you take that, uh, multiply it when you're not in log scale, but here we're going to add it because we're in the log scale uh, to population. So you think about this, each person has a, a slice of territory that they need for themselves. The number of, take that times the number of people, then you get the total territory size uh, of a polity. But here's the key multiplier effect that we've proposed or that, the, that has been proposed. And that is that uh, when you have the development of shared infrastructure, again, roads, sanitations, you can think monuments uh, that bring people together, uh, facilitate cooperation and social capital, that actually interacts in a positive way uh, with population size. So as population size goes up, um, the, the, uh, the availability of energy actually goes up in the system because uh, uh, population, uh, those, that infrastructure gets more productive. And so that should actually increase the slope of the relationship between uh, population size and territory size. So I'm, if you look at this in predictions in graphical form, I'm going to ignore just the independent effect of uh, infrastructure development, shared infrastructure development, and just focus on this interaction effect. So here's what we're talking about. You have population size. As the population size goes up, you've got to get more resources uh, in the polity. So of course, polity territory size expands. Typically, this is sublinear in most uh, human societies. But that's not really what we're worried about here, whether the scaling is sublinear, but uh, whether there is a difference between uh, societies that have high infrastructure uh, and societies that have uh, a low investment in public shared infrastructure. And so what we see here is that where we have a high investment in shared public infrastructure, uh, given the, based on the examples that I've given, when you have a low population, you actually use resources, um, need much less territory per person than a society uh, that has um, uh, little investment in shared public infrastructure. But as population increases, you get this positive multiplier effect. And so energy becomes more available and that really weakens the constraints on people to pack into space and conserve resources. And so they can actually spread out and you can get a polity more effectively integrating larger swaths of hinterland into uh, their total area. So you actually get a much steeper slope where you have this uh, low development of public infrastructure, you have these really hard constraints uh, on, on people uh, and their use of energy. That there's real strong selective pressure to uh, conserve energy and pack into space to uh, create dense networks that are packed uh, and that are not you know, far flung and, and you're trying to sort of reduce uh, those, those costs uh, of, of working together. And so this is the basic prediction. So we can look at this very simply with uh, modern societies, look at the scaling relationship uh, between uh, population and the uh, territory size of modern societies controlling for infrastructure development and see if we get this uh, interaction effect that we expect. We can also look at it in ancient societies using the Shes Hat database uh, that was developed by Peter Turchin and colleagues who Jack uh, Lux, excuse me, Lux has just uh, published a version of that uh, database in which they have made several uh, improvements uh, to it. And so we can use both of these data sets to see if we see this effect of the development of infrastructure on 
uh, the territorial uh, ecology of human polities. So first we'll look at uh, modern uh, human societies, modern polities. We have the natural log of territory size on the y-axis, the natural log of population on the x-axis. This is the output from a regression with our interaction effect, our multiplier effect. Uh, the dark blue line is uh, uh, infrastructure development, a high degree of infrastructure development. The light blue line is the lowest degree of infrastructure development. And you can see it matches our theoretical predictions quite well. Uh, we have a lower uh, intercept here with high infrastructure development. Small countries uh, use their territory more effectively, but as population goes up, your energy is becoming, in theory, more available, weakening uh, constraints to really pack into space. And so you get this steeper uh, slope here. You actually see this multiplier effect as you have a more shallow slope among uh, countries that uh, have uh, less developed public shared infrastructure. So we go to the Shesat database. Again, this replicates exactly what you saw on the last, last graph. We're just looking at polity uh, centuries from uh, prehistoric societies, and we see the exact same infrastructure pattern, high infrastructure, steeper slope, low infrastructure development, much more shallow slope. So it appears that we can detect this multiplier effect on the spatial ecology of human polities, both in the past and the present. So I'm just gonna give you some preliminary conclusions here. Shared infrastructure leads to more tightly packed populations at small population sizes, but less packed populations uh, at larger population sizes due to lower transportation costs, higher social capital, and a greater availability of energy, really weakening uh, the incentives to conserve energy and really pack tightly into space. And this may be a general law of the spatial socioecology of human polities. And to that, I will add, it's, it's really interesting to see this interplay between current conditions or recent past conditions, the way that Claudio laid them out and using that as a hypothesis for understanding what's going on in the past. Mauricio is doing the same thing with uh, using the, the modern industrialization uh, uh, population growth pattern as a hypothesis to see what's going on in the past. And so I'm trying to do the same thing here. And I think one of the strengths of our group, in addition to the really strong case studies that we've seen, is that we are trying to organically develop this working between the past and the present to identify these general evolutionary processes that are occurring in integrated uh, demographic, social systems, ecological systems. Uh, and so I find that to be really exciting. So with that, I will end there, say thank you for your time. Uh, Jacob, um, I was just wondering, um, is there a possibility to take into account uh, exogenous factors such as uh, how the population, the territory size can be of, of a given polity? can be affected by the territory size of an adjacent polity. And if this can uh, factor can uh, affect the polity size. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Um, I don't, there might be a way to do that in the Sheshat database. So this, one of the, one of the limitations of this kind of analysis and model is you're looking at uh, a synchronic analysis. You're looking at uh, synchronic analysis, and so you're, yeah. you're implicitly assuming that these systems uh, are bounded in competition with each other and near equilibrium, which is not necessarily the case. So I, I do think that if you could find, if you could get the time series, right, um, you're, looking at a, you're looking at an average effect here, but if you could get the time series of any particular case study, uh, I do think those exogenous dynamics would, or those, those, com those competitive dynamics, I don't even, um, those competitive dynamics would affect the territory size of a polity, sure.